More trouble for Volkswagen. The European Investment Bank says it may recall billions of dollars worth of loans given for the development of low emissions engines. And mixed messages for Japanese women. The government wants them to be in work to boost the economy, but at the same time have more children to prop up the falling population. Hello and a very warm welcome. You're with World Business Report. I'm Sally Bundock. Also in the programme, shares in the indebted Swiss miner Glencore are halted from trading in Hong Kong today. We'll be explaining why. But we're starting with Volkswagen again. It's facing another serious financial challenge. The European Investment Bank is saying it might recall loans it gave to the German carmaker for things like the development of low emissions engines. The bank's president told a German newspaper these could be recalled in the wake of VW's emissions cheating scandal. Since 1990, it's reported the EIB granted loans worth around 4.6 billion euros to the car giant. Now, this comes after its U.S. boss made a serious apology for installing the so-called defeat devices in its diesel cars at a congressional hearing in the United States. Last week, German police swept into Volkswagen's uh, headquarters, carrying away files, hard disks, all sorts. The prosecutor's office said they're looking for data linked to the defeat devices after receiving about a dozen criminal complaints from citizens and one from VW itself. And today, the focus will move to the U.K., where Paul Willis, who's the UK Managing Director of VW UK, will appear before the Transport Select Committee. Well, let's get more from David Bailey, Professor of Industrial Strategy at Aston University. David, nice to see you again. So what revelations do you think we might hear in, in the UK today? Well, I think the MPs will want to know who knew in Volkswagen, how high up this went. We heard from Michael Horn last week that this was a few software engineers. That was scarcely credible. He barely seemed to believe it himself. So who knew? I think as well they want to know about the UK situation, how consumers are impacted here, how the recall will go, and also whether VW will compensate consumers in the UK that are affected. And in terms of this European Investment Bank story and the fact that they could re recall loans that they've uh, loaned to VW, Give us perspective on how serious that is for the car maker. The European Investment Bank make loans to lots of car makers to develop clean technologies to get CO2 emissions down and improve performance. Now, if it turns out that actually Volkswagen had been taking money but then not using it for the purposes that EIB wanted, then there is a chance it could be recalled. And that's hugely important. It deepens the crisis for VW even further. It may mean that they may have to report, repay some of that money to the EIB. And also in the future, if it's damaged the relationship with the European Investment Bank, it may get it more, become more difficult for the firm to access future funding. And that would be critical for the firm. How is the company faring given this crisis which has been going on now for, we're coming into the fourth week, uh, we had Michael Horn apologising last week, it, it just seems to be one long list of uh, situations where VW is on the back foot. That's right. It's an utter disaster of the company's own making and a spectacular own goal. The, the company, it seems, knew about a possible um, breach of environmental regulations in America in spring of 2014. It was only in September 2015 it admitted that that was the case and there was this software. And since then, there's been a drip, drip, drip of information. The company, it seems uh, unable, really, I think, to get to grip with the scale of the problem. And also the appointment of a, an insider as CEO really doesn't suggest to me that the company is really looking to clean things up, rather trying to cover things up to some extent. And just briefly, we haven't heard of other car makers yet, have we, that could be doing the same thing? Not cheating directly. There are suggestions in the media that for a range of other manufacturers, that pollution emissions far exceed what the test performance suggests. So there's a broader issue about the reliability of the testing system in Europe and also about public policy more generally. Are we, are we as consumers buying products that do what manufacturers tell us in terms of performance, emissions and pollution? All right. Thank you so much, David Bailey, for your time, Thank Professor you. at Aston University. <clears throat> we will update you, of course, on how 
Uh, the UK boss at VW gets on later before the Parliamentary Select Committee. But now, let's move on to Japan. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has been trying to encourage more women into the workforce to boost the economy. The policy has been in place for nearly a year and a half, but not a single company has yet applied for the government subsidy that is there to try and encourage uh, women and promote them in work. And even among Japanese women themselves, opinions are very divided about it. So as part of the BBC's Japan Direct season, Marika Oi went to meet some women. Haruka's day starts at 6 a.m. with a jolt. She has three children and getting them ready for school on her own is a challenge. On her to-do list, cooking intricate breakfast, three rounds of laundry, washing up and getting them dressed. All this before 7 a.m. Japan needs more big families like Haruka's to ward off a sharp decline in population. But at the same time, it's also asking more women to return to the workforce. Is this realistic? I understand why Prime Minister Abe says the economy needs more women to work, but I wonder if he's listening to the voice of real mothers. Even with the pressure, more than 70% of women here quit their job after having their first child and don't return to work for a decade or more. But one woman who has done it all is Mitsuki Mata, former diplomat and the first chief executive officer of the Body Shop Japan. She now runs this women's group and she's concerned. We're in such a dangerous place. Japan has a huge debt and I think women are partly to blame. They're not giving back to society financially. I propose that stay-at-home wives who have had a higher education should pay back the tuition fees spent on them. How to juggle the demands of a career, along with the expectation that women also have to take care of the traditional responsibilities of a housewife are a real issue here in Japan. For Japan's gender equality to improve, it's not enough for the government to just set the targets, but society's definition of women's roles needs to change. Marie Goy, BBC News, Tokyo. And you can see more from Mariko on this subject. Uh, she's got a documentary, Working Lives, and it's at, at, at Zappa Times. You can see on the screen there on BBC World News. So do tune in for more. Now, shares in the Swiss commodities trader and miner Glencore have been halted in Hong Kong today, pending an announcement. Let's go to Sharon Jitlail, who's in our Asia Business Hub in Singapore. Sharon, what are we expecting? Well, that's right, Sally. As you said, those shares have been halted in Hong Kong. Uh, reportedly, the company is going to uh, plan to sell some assets in Australia and Chile. This is all part of moves to slash its $30 billion in debt. Now, it had apparently told the Hong Kong exchange it would soon publish information regarding certain of its assets in Australia and Chile, which constitutes inside information. So these asset sales, of course, part of a broad plan uh, Glencore outlined last month to raise money, to cut those massive debts by about a third, and that's as it looks to weather a slump in commodity prices and revive its shares. Those shares, I should say, have dropped some 57% just this year. And the company is uh, saying it's looking to sell a minority stake in its uh, agricultural business. And last month, it actually sold one of its Brazilian uh, projects, a nickel project, for about $8 million. Now, in Chile, we know that the company owns stakes in a number of mines, a hydropower project, a copper smelter as well. In Australia, it owns an array of copper, coal, nickel, zinc, and other assets, as well as farms, uh, though uh, a spokesman has said that there's no immediate comment yet on what assets exactly are going to be sold. OK, as ever, we will watch this space. Sharon Jit, thank you very much. Other stories, the former boss of Anglo-Irish Bank has been arrested on an extradition warrant. The US Attorney's Office in Massachusetts says David Rum will now remain in custody in Boston until his hearing in a federal court on Tuesday. He moved to the US in 2009, the same year Anglo-Irish collapsed and was bailed out by Irish taxpayers. Mr. Drum, who ran Anglo-Irish Bank from 2005 to 2008, subsequently filed for bankruptcy in the US.
A brief look at markets. Today, Japan is closed for a public holiday, so no action in Japan or Tokyo. We've got Hong Kong open and Shanghai. The markets in China up around about 2%, so that's really being reflected uh, there. Some good news, actually, about how they spent their time during the Golden Week break in terms of their spending. Uh, perhaps that will boost the Chinese economy. I'll see you soon.